God is so good to me. God loves me. I am highly favored. I'm God's favorite kid. I'm highly favored of the Lord. So are you. You know, I tell my grandkids that. I tell them all, you're my favorite granddaughter. <laughs> then I tell the other one, you're my favorite granddaughter. I don't say two. I say you are. There's a difference. I don't say, well, you're my favorite granddaughter and you're my favorite granddaughter too. That's like number two, right? right. That's, not th that's not what I'm talking about. You are my favorite granddaughter, my favorite grandson, whatever, because that's how God sees us. You're his favorite child, period. Amen? And you're his favorite child. And you're, you, you get that? There's a difference. You're not my favorite grandchild too. You're my favorite grandchild. And that's, I, I speak that to him. I speak that to him because that's a God principle. That's a God principle that all of us have to learn that he is for us and not against us. That's right. And he is more for us than we're for ourselves. I guarantee you that yes, much. Right. I learned that lesson kind of hard. <laughs> God wants me, God, God blesses me in spite of me. Right. Amen. Amen. You know, I've just made some dumb decisions in my life, and I don't know if you have or not, but... Uh, one or two. One or two. There you go. Well, that's good. But... Uh, <laughs> what'd you say? Don't lie? <laughs> Amen. But we've all, we've all done this. We've all blown it. You know what? That doesn't matter. Us blowing it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to God. Why are we worried about it? Why are you worried about so much? This is a word for somebody. Why are you worried so much about what you've done wrong? About where you've messed up? Why are you worried so much about it? He's not. He sent his son to pay for it. God sent his son to pay for your mistake and to pay for mine. He doesn't see it. He doesn't care about it. He washed it away as far as the east is from the west. That's a long ways. <laughs> it's gone. That's what it means. It's gone. Amen? The, your, your mistake is gone. Somebody's saying, I made a big mistake in here. Somebody's saying that right now. And you know who you are, and I'm not, my eyes are closed. I'm not looking at anybody because every time I do that, they say, were you talking about me? No. <laughs> I'm not talking about anybody. I'm talking about everybody. Are you with me? Yeah. I'm talking about everybody. In Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for this person right now that feels like they are not forgiven to realize right now that his blood paid the price. And like Leslie said, he doesn't even see it. He sees Jesus. Amen? Receive that. That's for somebody. I'm not gonna point anybody out here today because I wouldn't wanna make anybody feel bad. That could be for you on, on the internet. You, it can be for you on the internet. I believe there's somebody out there too that doesn't realize forgiveness. You've been forgiven. God is not mad at you. You know, we, we, we say that all the time. We act like we know it. But he's not upset with you. You know, did, did you ever feel like the one that God wasn't upset with everybody else except you? <laughs> yeah, I've been to that store. It's no fun. Amen. It's no fun there. There's no fun in that, but God has forgiven you. He's forgiven you, and he's made you his favorite, favorite son, his favorite, favorite daughter. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. God is so good. He's been speaking to me about some stuff, and, uh, you know, I, uh, you know we got to realize that uh, what the main thing is, the main thing is not the political situation or the problems in the government. That is not the main thing. Thank you for that thunderous silence. I, I actually didn't. I got a grunt. I heard someone go, eh. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's not the main thing. It is not. The main thing is Jesus. The main thing is not your problem whatever it may be. The main thing is not your job. The main thing is not you making money. It is not. It's not about that. 
That is not the main thing. The main thing is have you having a relationship with Jesus. On a rela- I mean a relationship. I'm not talking about, yeah, I believe, I believe, and go on down the road. That is not what we're talking about here. That's not it. I'm talking about a relationship when you're talking to him about what you eat. You know, I heard somebody say years ago that, you know, their diet was a Holy Spirit diet. That's a good one, amen? But don't lie to yourself and say that it's good to eat stuff that's bad. Amen? Pray and eat what God tells you to eat. That's a Holy Spirit diet, amen? God speaking to you? Anybody hear God's voice? Uh Uh-oh, now this is a test. Three of you, four of you, five of you, six. Anybody else? God speaks to you all the time. He doesn't withhold you anything. He doesn't withhold anything from you and he doesn't put you on a shelf. Remember those days? That that was a big thing years ago. God's put me on a shelf. I remember that. Have you ever heard that? You ever heard people say that? Well, God's put me on a shelf. What? What? He put you on a shelf? What does that mean? He put you in his uh, pantry or something? I mean, what, what, what are you talking about, you know? How would he do that? He doesn't do that. God never stops. He never quits. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. That's what the word says for pity's sake. Why don't we just receive that? He's speaking to you all the time. He doesn't withhold anything from you. You ask him, he will tell you. Now, sometimes you can't hear. And sometimes you can't see because you've made yourself deaf and you've made yourself blind. Right? By unbelief. Unbelief, amen? That's, that's the key right there, unbelief. You know, you know, that is the definition of sin. There's seven definitions of in, in, in the Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and all that. There's all kinds of definitions, but what, the main definition is unbelief. What happened in the garden? They didn't believe God. Amen. That's where it came in. They didn't trust. They didn't believe. Do you believe? See, you got you to believe. You got to believe that you believe. Can you believe it? You got to believe that you believe. Say this with me. Say, I believe. I believe. And I believe it. I believe it. There's more to that than you think. Are you with me? There's more to that. Because belief is what makes it work. Everything is by faith. Amen? Everything. It all works by believing it. And, and we got to come to this point where we believe it. Now, he's showing me some stuff here, and, and uh, I'm, I'm really thrilled about it. Uh, the name of this message is Minute by Minute. Amen? Minute by Minute. And I studied this out in several translations and just uh, went to it and got to have a good, good time. In Matthew 6.34, you all know Matthew 6.33, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. You know that one? Well, this is Matthew 6.34. He says, refuse to worry about tomorrow. What? Sounds like a decision. Refuse to worry about tomorrow. But what about Medicare? What about Social Security? What about my job? What about my kids? Look at those nuts. (laughs) Come on. Come on, I was a kid once. I mean, my, that's what my mom thought. What are we going to do with that net, you know? Come on. To refuse to worry about tomorrow. This is in the Passion Translation. Uh, that's New King James up there. But uh, the Passion says, refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge that comes your way one Day at a time. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Now, does anybody know who said that? Come on now. Thank you. We're not asking hard questions here. Hey man, that's not hard. Jesus, man. 
This is a, this is a, a declaration from Jesus. Take it one day at a time. Did you ever hear about that? Amen. But we, we, we want to take it one year at a time. We want to take it, uh, you know, 10 years at a time. We want to get our, our stuff in order. Come on now. We got to get everything out there and, you know, spread it out. And we're big visionaries and all that. And there's nothing wrong with that because the Bible also tells us to have a vision. Where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. That means they go nuts. Did you know that? Yeah, that's what it means. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish or the people cast off restraint. That's what it says. And, and, and that means they go nuts. They go, they go crazy. They go wild. That's what it means. So yes, we have a vision, but refuse to worry about it. Amen? Refuse to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. Refuse to worry about what's going to happen next year. Well, refuse to worry about what's going to happen in 2022 or 2024. Refuse to worry about it. That's a direct uh, command from our Lord for pity's sake. Amen? Now, I didn't say stick your head in the sand and do nothing about it. He didn't say that. It says, but deal with each challenge, it says. See? So don't, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater like uh, I've seen uh, some huge part of Christianity do. They just stuck their head in the sand and didn't stand up. Hello? Some, some major uh, uh, political parties did the same thing. What, what were they called? Republicrats? Sorry, I stutter sometimes. Whatever. It doesn't make any difference. You know what, what, what matters? It, it doesn't matter that the, 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 that the church blew it. Has the church ever blown it before? <laughs> Thank God for mercy. You know, most wars were started by, you know, church people. Hello. What are we doing here? What, where are we? Where are we right now? We're, we're in a time right now when the only thing we can do is, is, is go to Jesus and say, yes, Lord. And I will deal what? But deal with each challenge that comes your way. Deal with it. He didn't say stay, hide from it. See, I think that's the problem. People hide from everything. People don't face things. When I was a young man, I was a real fool with my money. And I, when I lost my first fortune, I owed a lot of people. And you, and you get to where you don't, you don't talk to them. You ever been there? You ever owed somebody and then you just don't talk to them? Well, what, what happens is it just becomes a way of life. You get used to it. And then you just become a little... Creep. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it, you know? And so I learned something when I was a young man. I learned that you need to face it. If you owe somebody, you call them on the phone and you say, hello, I owe you. I have no idea how I'm going to pay you back, but I'm going to. I want you to know that. And if you'll allow me to start with $1, one dollar, one ten dollar bill, one hundred dollars, whatever it is, I will start paying you right away. And you face it, you face it. And you know what happens? It goes away. You know, in 1980, Adam had a heart surgery and it cost a hundred thousand dollars and we didn't have insurance. In 1980, a hundred thousand dollars was a lot of money. Plus, I had lost a hundred thousand dollars in a fine vis- another fine business venture that I was in, and, and and you know what? It took us twelve years to pay for that surgery. I wanted to go bankrupt. Somebody told me you should go bankrupt, so I went to an attorney, very wise man, very wise man. He looked at me and he says, "Do you owe the money?" Did you use the goods and wares that you got from spending that money? And I go, well, yeah. He said, pay it back. 
I said, I don't know how. He said, $10 at a time. Call the people, deal with it. Don't hide from them. Be real, face it. Come on, amen? That's not fun, but it works. Are you with me? That's another word for somebody. This is not in the notes. Come on. That's for somebody. Somebody face it. Face your stuff. Whatever it is, face it and say, yes, I'm here. I can't do this. I don't know how, but I will. I owe you. I'll pay you. Are you with me? Come on. That's a good word, man. I, I tell you what, we need, we need to deal with each challenge. That's what he's talking about here in the word. Deal with each challenge that comes our way. Stuff is happening in your life. Stuff is happening in our nation. We need to do our part. Amen? You need to call your Congress people. You need to call your senators. You need to call your governor. You need to call your mayor. You need to call whoever. You need to write letters. You need to do whatever you need to do. Do something. Amen? Listen to God. Say, what's my part in this? And do it. That's just like facing the deal. That's like what? It says, but deal with each challenge. That's dealing with each challenge, isn't it? Come on. He didn't say hide from each challenge. He didn't say live in your basement and you'll never get a disease. If you clean it. <laughs> I had to just throw that part in for Leslie because she's, she's a neat freak. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on. But deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. What? That means, so we got a challenge today. Deal with what you have today. And then tomorrow, you deal with what that challenge has turned into. Are you with me? Did you ever notice when you do that, they just start going away? Anybody experience that? I have, I have, one, one, one thing at a time, amen. I mean, Mona is a, such an incredible woman. She, she does so much and she's just uh, amazing and she thinks so much different than me. But Mona has this idea, see, that everything has to be done. Look at Robin's head bobbing up and down like she's in agreement. <laughs> but she thinks it needs to be done now. So, and see, I'm a one thing at a time guy. You give me a job, I'll do it. And I'll do it right. I believe in that. I mean, I believe in doing my job right. I'll do what I can do and I'll do it to the best of my ability. And I get it all done. And then she has another one. The other night we were working at the house over here, painting, and we had ripped the carpet out, scraped up all the carpet tack, and cleaned up all the sand that filters through the carpet. Did you ever do that? That's a lot of fun. And uh, you know your house is really clean when you do that. And then uh, we're, I was painting. Well, something happened in the basement and uh, some sewage came up down there. And, then, and so I'm, I'm stopping uh, just to look at this and... and uh, I told Mona, yeah, well, I'll get to that. I'll, cl I'll clean that up. Well, she wanted me to do it then. I said, no, I can't. I'm painting right now. <laughs> and when I get the painting done, then I'll go to the sewage. But I can't do the painting and the sewage at the same time. I'm not going to switch hats. I can't. My painter hat doesn't fit my sewer hat. <laughs> Are you with me? See? You can, 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 can you see that? I mean, one thing at a time. I'm telling you what, that's biblical, men. That's biblical. That is biblical. Yes, there's 50 things that need to be done. I'm not so dumb I don't know that. But I can do one at a time. And ladies, I'm gonna help, I'm gonna help you out with your husbands here. When you give them a list and they get that list done, leave them alone for a while. <laughs> Amen? Help them, yeah. You know that stuff needs to get done, you know. But then, see, Mona isn't like that. Mona will do it herself. <laughs> Mona will carry 
the flatbed off of a pickup and put it on another one. I mean, she's nuts. I mean, she'll just do it. You know, you know. Holy Moses. So then we think that's manipulation, don't we, Joe? <laughs> Ladies, we don't know for sure. But if you give your guy something to do, and he does it. Leave him alone. Amen? Just for a little while. He can handle a new list tomorrow. Amen? But see, like 10, 10 at night, I'm done. You can stick a fork in me, I'm done. <laughs> Mona is running around still like ricochet rabbit <laughs> at 10.30 at night going, well, we got to get this done. We got to get this done. We got to get this done. We, no, we don't. I got to go to bed. Amen. One thing at a time. What? But deal with each challenge that comes your way one day at a time. And see, I really think that says one thing at a time. <laughs> Multitasking. If you listen to our friend, what's the brain doctor? What's her name, uh, doctor? Huh? Leaf. Leaf. Carolyn Leaf. She says, really, there's no such thing as multitasking. Your brain can't handle it. Watch out. Watch out, man. I really believe in one thing at a time. You know what I've learned? And I've learned this. I do a lot better job if I'm not pressured. If I'm not shoved into a corner and you got to get this done, you got to get this done so you can do this. You got to get this done so you can do this. Hey, well, all right, now what do you want to get for it? Hey, blah, 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 you know. <laughs> That is not my pace. Amen? My pace is I'm going to get this done and I'm going to do it right. Amen? Now, I didn't used to be like that. I used to just fudge through everything and fake it, you know. I'm not like that anymore. I learned that doesn't work. You got to do it right. Amen? You're going to do something, do it right. Amen? That's good. But one thing at a time, please. Ladies, I'm just trying to help you. <laughs> I'm not dissing you. I'm not dissing you. You understand? Everybody okay? <laughs> you workaholics. We love you. And we wouldn't know what to do without you. And then I'll, I'll hit this side too because it'll only be right. Men, don't be lazy slugs that don't do anything, all right? Don't just sit on the couch and click it. There's nothing on there anyway, let me tell you. Best thing I watched last night was a Jimmy Stewart movie. That's right, Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. You, know, you know, I mean that. You know, if you want to do something like that once in a while, fine. But click off, click off, and do something productive. Amen. I really believe in that. Read the Word for pity's sake. Amen. You want to do something? Read the Word. But guys, women have picked up a lot because men are too lazy to do it. I don't make myself uh, uh, real well-liked by saying stuff like that, let me tell you. <laughs> Come on. Some, yeah, not by men anyway. <laughs> but uh, come on now, I gave you both a shot. But it's true. A lot of guys are just lazy. They don't want to do anything. They'll work, they come home, they're done. Period, don't do anything else. Don't even talk to their wife. Let me tell you, that ain't gonna work. Hmm? Okay. Is it, did you get the message? Men, don't be lazy. Ladies, back off. <laughs> how, do you li how do you like me now? <laughs> what? Tomorrow will take care of itself? Really? How does that work? Tomorrow? He said that. Why does it say tomorrow will take care of itself? Because you're trusting God and it will. Let me tell you what, it's gonna look different in the morning. I've done that so many times, go to bed with this big thing on me. Whoa, 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 what are you gonna do? You wake up in the morning, it's like, where'd that go? He took care of it while I was sleeping. You know, that's a promise of God. While he's sleeping, while we're sleeping, he's working. Amen. He's taking care of all of our need. 
according to his riches and glory. He's taking care of us. He's blessed us beyond measure. Amen. One day's trouble is enough for one day. What? That, that, it's enough. Don't worry about the trouble that you think is going to happen next week. Summer, our dog's going to have another surgery. Yeah. And it just, um, just fries me. Uh, she's, she started looking like she was in pain, and then she started limping, and then she started holding her leg up. And so we had her x-rayed, and they said that she's going to have a surgery on Tuesday. So uh, I can get very irritated about that because they want to charge. Uh, they're not going to charge for the surgery because they actually admitted that it was uh, faulty hardware. Okay. But then they want to charge us some other big fee for the uh, anesthesia and all this stuff. And so um, pray for me. Yes, that I would handle this like a believer because I remember the old way <coughs> and the old way would be that I would just tell them flat out that I'm not going to pay that and you're going to fix the dog or I'm going to sue you now see I don't believe in that I, I think that's what's wrong with America one of the big problems in America today is everybody sues everybody for everything and I'm sick of it, and I hate it, and it's all, all, all the only ones that make out are the attorneys. Come on. Come on, they're getting fat, man, and it's an incredible deal. But let me tell you, business is business, but I, I don't want to do that. I don't. I don't want to sue people. So I have this problem. And this, we just found all this out on Friday, and I have this problem, and this problem comes up on Tuesday. And then the Lord has me studying this. It's like... Oh, I wonder what this is for. <laughs> you know, instead of getting all, Mona was scared to tell me when she got the email because she knows it's just going to fry my grits and I'm not going to take it out on her or anything, but it's going to make me very angry and I'm going to have to, you know, tell those people I'm not paying you anything, you know, or I'll pay you. If you want me to pay this, I will pay it, but then I go uh, file my report with the state of Colorado uh, veterinary and then, I, and then I go to my attorney and sue you for all the money that you wrongly charged me because that's how I feel. Yep. Are you with me? Yep. Come on, you understand that feeling? You guys got stuff in your life, don't you? This is just a dog. Thank God it's not a person. Come on, I love my dog but, and I, I'll do everything I can to make that dog Okay. But I, I tell you what, thank God it's not a person. Amen. But he told me, don't worry. That was, this was Friday. He says, this isn't even tomorrow. You're talking about Tuesday. And I went, oh, duh. So you know what I did? I, I cast that care upon him for he cares for me. I gave it to him. And I'm telling you what, in five minutes, it left me. The anger, the, you know, I hate being ripped off. Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? I don't mind paying for something. You know what? Some people say, well, that at restaurant's really expensive. I say, that's really good food. I don't care. I'll pay for it. Hey, Amen. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. I don't mind paying for something that's real. I don't mind. I'm not cheap. I don't believe in that. I, I'm not. But when they rip you off and gouge you and other, other veterinarians say that's astronomical, that shouldn't even be close to that, that price, then I don't like it. But I got angry and I, and I got all wild. But I gave that to him on Friday because it wasn't Tuesday yet. He said, let me take care of it. Wow. Is that awesome? We'll find out. I'll let you know next week. Amen? How it came out. But I'm telling you what, I gave, I gave that whole thing to him. And I couldn't deal with it that day because that wasn't even that day's problem. Are you with me? I told Mona, I said, honey, no matter what, the dog will get fixed. And I'm not going to get the surgeon all mad before 
she goes in to work on the dog. I, I didn't fall off the turnip truck, you know. <laughs> Amen. So, one thing at a time. One day at a time. I've got to, uh, I've got to uh, share this scripture with you just because it's awesome. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's say that. Um, taking one day at a time is the maximum. It's not the minimum. You don't take one day at a time and then maybe a couple more days or a week or a month or a year or worrying about what it's going to be like in 20 years. No, one day at a time is the max. So I'm coming down to minute by minute. I'm breaking it down to minute by minute. Anybody ever had an addiction? Anybody ever was a drunk or a drug addict? Or anything? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Most of us all have had some kind of addiction. Uh, you know how you deal with it? Minute by minute. Amen? I'm, I stayed sober for another minute. Hallelujah! I throw myself a party. Amen? Oh, another minute. Yay! Come on, I got a whole hour. Yay! Yes, Lord. But no more than one day at a time. Come on. Amen? I'm sober today. I've been sober for 30 some odd years. I, don't, I, I lost track. Isn't that awesome? But I don't take it for granted. I just thank God for it because he delivered me. Amen? Psalm 84 in the Passion. This is awesome. God of heaven's armies, you find so much beauty in your people. <laughs> I knew you would like that one, Julie. Isn't it true though? He sees us all beautiful. We don't even see ourselves beautiful. He does. Come on. He does. They are like lovely sanctuaries of your presence. Deep within me are these lovesick longings, desires and daydreams of living in union with you. While I am near you, my heart and my soul will sing and worship with my joyful songs of you, my true source and spring of life. O Lord of heaven's armies, my King and my God, even the sparrows and the swallows are welcome to build a nest among your altars for the birds to raise their young. What pleasure fills those who live every day in your temple, enjoying you as they worship in your presence. How enriched are they who find their strength in the Lord. Within their hearts are the highways of loveliness. Even when their paths wind through the dark valley of tears, they dig deep to find a pleasant pool where others find only pain. He gives them a brook of blessing filled from the rain of an outpouring. I love that. Uh, outpouring, get it, come on. They grow stronger and stronger with every step forward and the God of all gods will appear before them in Zion. Hear my cry, O Lord of heaven's armies. God of Jacob, listen to my loving prayer. God, your wraparound presence is our defense. Whoa, isn't that good? Your wraparound presence. He's wrapped around me, man. That is awesome. And I'm wrapped around him. In your kindness, look upon the faces of the anointed ones. For just one day of intimacy with you is like a thousand days of joy rolled into one. I'd rather stand at the threshold in the front of the gate beautiful, ready to go in and worship my God than to live my life without you in the most beautiful palace of the wicked. For the Lord God is brighter than the brilliance of a sunrise, wrapping himself around me like a shield. He is so generous with his gifts of grace and glory. Those who walk along his paths 
with integrity will never lack one thing they need, for he provides it all. O Lord of heaven's armies, what euphoria fills those who forever trust you. Come on now. Man, if, I'm telling you what, if that don't light your fire, your wood is wet. <laughs> Come on, we've got to get this. We, 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 we got to receive, re- meditate that. You know what, I, I just started reading it out loud the other day. I just started reading it out loud and it just changed my world. Hey man, stuff happening all around, man. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening. Some, somebody's calling me about the... Uh, uh, some problem that they have in their family. Somebody else is calling me about this. Somebody else has said this, and somebody else is hurt, and somebody else is this. And I just started reading this out loud. It just changed my world. And you know what? He took care of every one of those little deals. Every single one of them was dealt with. Wow. Meditate on that. Amen? Receive it. Here's the deal. Here's the word for the day. Refuse to worry about tomorrow. That's the word of the day. Amen? Did you get it? You, you believe it? You receive it? Now, we gotta make sure that we know, that we know, that we know, that we know that Jesus is Lord of our lives. Amen? So just say this prayer with me out loud. Those of you that are here at Mountain High, those of you that are out there in Cyberland, And uh, somebody's going to get saved today. Hallelujah. We're going to hear a testimony. Somebody will be mightily saved, born again. Uh, A lot of things are going on. If it be in this room, so be it. If not, it will be on the internet. However, let us know. Amen. Let us know. We're not trying to keep track or put you on a list. But what we're trying to do is say yes to every good thing that happens in the kingdom. Amen. So say this with me today out loud, please. If you've been saved for 150 years, it's okay. Say, Lord Jesus, today I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Today I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you died on the cross and that God raised you from the dead. I believe it. I receive it. Holy Spirit, fall fresh on me right now. I receive you, Holy Spirit. I receive Jesus as my Lord and the Holy Spirit to fill me to overflowing. Lord, I believe in you. And I believe you as my Lord. In Jesus' name, I am saved. saved. Amen. Amen. We'll see you guys next week. We love you all. We had a ball. Amen.